<laughs> um, right, now, this is all about product photography. Now, product photography to me is still life. So, really, it's a still life. I was a still life photographer from about 1968 to 1985. In 1985, I started shooting cars in the studio, so really that was just a big still life as well. Now, the interesting or the important thing is, if, you're, if you want to learn how to do it because of eBay and you're, you're shooting all your products one after another, it's worthwhile spending the time, it's worthwhile showing uh, how the product is. Uh, if you're a photographer wanting to get into studio photography, it's very important you do your, your product shots like, like I do. Um, it's the only way you're going to get better and better clients. Giving them stuff shot in, um, in a light box, if you like, which is light coming in one side and the other, light tent, we call it, like the back, like the top, just flattens out everything on the product. I can see the reason if you've got 300 to shoot, but believe me, it can be very quick with my technique. So, I hope you, uh, hope you enjoy this lesson. Now, we've got to find out what we're going to shoot. Now, why not this? Um, now these are pretty difficult, black, silver, so let's give it a go. Okay, now the first thing we have to do is look at the product. Now, it's a product, okay, it's got buttons there, buttons here, it's got uh, Phillips written on the side, a little blue text. Now we have to decide what's what we want to see in the image. Well, I think something, an angle, similar to that would probably allow us to see most of what we want to see and create a good light. Now the next thing I would do is just have a little look while I'm standing there, just see what reflectors do, how I can light it, etc. It gives me an idea where to put the main light because the whole theory is where one puts the main light uh, and then I'll show you how to actually light. So that's all me doing a little bit of research. So now we'll get on to actually putting the light in place. Right, now we've got it uh, virtually in place. I've got uh, a nice little bit of fishing wire holding it up. Um, so that's the position I want. It allows me to do all sorts of things around it. Um, now, let's zoom out and I'll show you how, how I've got the rough light. Okay, now what we've got is a piece of tracing paper, very, very simple, uh, with my halogen light behind it. I'm using the halogen only for the reason that I'm shooting a video. It would be exactly the same with a soft box or a flash head. Now, if I was using a soft box, I might not use the, tra the um, tracing paper. Now, what we'll do is just we'll tip the camera up a fraction, and I'll show you how, the, how it's set. And behind that tracing paper, is the halogen lamp um, and this is holding up the fishing wire, fishing line. Let's have a look at the light. Now I think maybe it's coming a bit too far from the back so what I'm going to do is just move the light, I'm going to leave the tracing paper where it is, but I'm going to move the light further around to the side. Now I'm going to move it um, about say 30 centimetres to one side. Now, it doesn't appear to make a lot of difference, but what it does, I'll move it back so you can see the difference. If you look at the word on the side, uh, Phillips, as I move the light, the visibility of the word Phillips changes to a more even visibility. I'll move it back again. So this is what I do all the time with an assistant or my wife or just doing it as I am now with the television screen, which is a very good, big help. So I've moved it to there. Well, I'll show you quickly uh, from a different angle uh, how much that move was. It was literally from there to there. Um, and I prefer it there because it enables me to do more with the lighting on the word Phillips than uh, at the other position. Now why do I prefer it, uh, the light there? Well, this is much nicer. Uh, before it was very burnt out because the light was hitting it and coming straight into the lens. So 
This was a lot uh, more burnt out at the top. Now this is more even. Now why do I prefer it being more even? Well, if it's more even, I can then put light back into it as I want with a reflector, mirror or anything else. Now the benefit of having this dark, this shadow here, is the shadow reflects into it. If the shadow didn't reflect into it, what would happen is it would be burnt out by the light hitting the background and coming back. So the shadow being there is useful for me to be able to adjust. Uh, now I've chosen the way I'm going to do it. And the way I'm going to do it is just with a very dirty, because uh, <laughs> it's been hanging around the studio, bathroom mirror. Now, if I put the bathroom mirror in a position that gives me a nice little reflection, it gives me some chance of picking up a nice bit of texture. You see, I'm looking at the television screen while I do it. Um, but I've got absolute control of what I do, and it's, the mirror is only lighting that tiny part of the image. And if I bring it to there, I can play around as well. Huh? You see what I can do? I can get all lots of different reflections. Now, this is where I really, the whole thing of still life becomes very interesting. Um, I think I'm going to leave it like that and it stands up on its own so it's a nice little nice little accessory and it's nice having those because they cost nothing and you can put them all around a set little mirrors like that so we can add mirrors uh, really as much as we want you see what this little one's doing it's just lighting up a little bit here and there so it's just a matter of personal taste where you want the light uh, what you want to show um, detail in. Now this little mirror does help to show the detail in this part because it's not nice having something dead black quite as big as that in an image. So I'll place that where it'll do its best. Uh, I get terribly involved in all this. Okay, now that's in a position that uh, that I like, which is not flooding it with light everywhere, but it is just putting a bit more light in here and a bit more light in the plastic, and it affects this as well. So it's a nice little compromise. Right now, my next criticism really of the picture is that this is all very black and we see no modelling in there. So if I bring a light from here through from there, um, we'll try and uh, get some more in there. Okay, we've got that in place. Now, I'll show you with and without it. Uh, you see what it does? Just adds a bit more detail into the, into the earpiece, which is quite nice. Now, the problem is, it's caused a little double shadow here. It's just caused a secondary shadow, which I don't like. But I can cut that off by just bringing in something and just cutting the light where it falls on the shadow. Now, okay, it might be in the image, but that's not really a problem, is it? Well, let's zoom back a bit um, so I can actually show you. Now that card's in place, it's not actually very worrying in the image because we just knock it out in Photoshop. Um, and that's the set, but you see there is an awful lot of flare, so our next thing to do is to stop any flare in the lens. Okay, so I, I use the television screen if I'm on my own working with this um, just to bring these in as much as I can without it really affecting the image. So let's do the other side, bring it in a bit more. Okay, now that will enable me to put as much background as I want on the on the picture now with Photoshop. Now, this is an incredibly important part. It really is. And it's overlooked by an awful lot of people. And I'll bring that down in there as well. Uh, and if I've got enough black card, which I'm running out of, um, I would bring one in here as well. Right, now we've got uh, all the card in place, I'll, uh, I'll just come back and you can see um, I'll, I'll move the camera around so you can actually see that this is black card quite close all the way around, all the way around the picture. Now, 
I can't stress enough how important this is. Well of course up to now you've been looking at it on video so I think it's time we took a picture um, and it'll be a little less contrasty than uh, the video so let's have a look. So here it is, this is the result um, we get. As you see I've uh, changed the colour balance a bit um, which was necessary. Other than that it's a bit uh, less contrasty, it's a much better image than on the video. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, now, don't forget to subscribe, but the most important thing we've learned today, and it is, and I'll stress it again, flare. Any flare in the lens will make your blacks go grey, and the picture won't be, now it can be used, of course, flare, but it uh, can be used nicely. But you don't want it in this type of shot, so make sure you cut any light coming into the lens, cut it down. So, don't forget to subscribe, mccordle.com. Um, well, see you soon. Bye.